And there is Municor. The clock ticked to the year of dragon last Saturday on February 10th. So happy New Year! Every year here on the bookish land, I celebrate the New Year by talking about the most popular books in the Chinese reading community for the previous year. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. Usually, I talk about the major top ten list in the Chinese reading community. For example, the overall top ten most popular books, the top ten fiction or nonfiction. But this year, I decided to do something different. In the spirit of dragon, I guess. So I'll be dividing this video into two parts. The first part will be this video, where I will talk about the top ten books of the year, which is a general list curated by popularity of the books, regardless of their genres. And I also want to talk about the top translated books in both fiction and nonfiction in this video. That means the books are translated into Chinese from other languages, because I think it's really fun to see what kind of books or topics. The Chinese readers are care about internationally, and also we may recognize some of the books, maybe because they're also popular here on BookTube. And also there will be a part two next week talking about specific genres, including mysteries, science fictions, and nonfictions, tacos on all sorts of topics. So if you are interested in Political genres. Don't miss out on next week's video. So now, without further ado, let's talk about today's list. The first being the top ten books of the year. There are four books written by Chinese authors in Chinese, and six other books are translated into Chinese from other languages. On the tenth spot is the Minister of Pain by Croatian and Dutch writer Dubravkov Ubrzik. It is translated into Chinese called Teng Teng Bu by Jiang Haoqian. This is a historical fiction, and it actually sounds. Right at my alley. The story is centered around Tajia, who fled the violent breakup of her home country and became a professor of literature in Amsterdam. And she also has a lot of students from her home country. So in the class, she encouraged her students to indulge their nostalgia and talk about their personal experiences. A friend who have read this book said this book is as pain as its title suggested, and it's all about when your history become fragmental and the loss and the heaviness. You experience. I imagine it's gonna hit hard for people who carries the longing for the history and can never go back. And honestly, I want to read it so badly. On the ninth spot is the nonfiction called Duo Tan Tan Wen Ti. Title translates to the issues issue. The book is a collection of nine interviews of people from different expertise, tackle on topics such as internet psychology, the overuse of historical narrative in today's world, especially in China, problems with elite. Latest educational system and climate change and a lot more. These topics are very current in Chinese society, so it makes sense that this book is very popular. Next on the eighth spot is a poetry collection because, like I told you, this is a list of books that, regardless of genres, the book is called "Gan Shi Jian de Ren" by Wang Jibing. Title roughly translates to. People who's in a hurry. Wang Jibing is a delivery personnel in China. The Chinese delivery industry is very unique, in my opinion, and very different from the one in the Western countries. And delivery personnel are facing a lot of pressure almost every second when they're on the job because the delivery deadlines are counting in minutes, if not in seconds, and that makes them. Have to rush from places to places, and Wang Jibing started to record his life as a person who's always chased by deadlines. His poems resonated with a lot of people、uh, who needs to live in a hurry. Hence the publishing of this collection. Following number seven is a translated nonfiction. It is Caliban and the Witch. Women, the Body, and Primitive Accumulation by Sylvia Federici. It was translated from Italian by Gong Jin, and the title in Chinese is "Caliban 与女巫：妇女、身体与原始积累 This is a modern classic that explore and explain the development of capitalism through the history of witch hunt and also the control of women's body. I actually had my eye on this book for quite some time, and I'm glad that it was well received in Chinese reading community, and maybe.、I'll I'll、get my hands on this book too. Number six here is a book that written by one of the most nominated author on this list throughout the years. It is a Japanese book called Ikino Hilu Tameno Sisho by Ueno Tsuko. It's translated into Chinese called 为了活下去的思想 by Zhou Yun and Xue Mei. The title roughly translates to the ideology in order to survive. Ueno Tsuko is one of the most popular feminist activists.、Um, That are popular in China, but she's a Japanese professor. This is another of her books about feminism, and more importantly, 
Why feminism? She argues that feminist is not only a fight for the right but also for survival. This book looks at women's life throughout history and examines what the role of the nation, violence, and gender. I'm glad that books about feminism are. Getting constant attention every year on these lists, but at the same time, I do crave for more variations of authors and ideas. Moving on to top five, number five is another Japanese nonfiction. It's called Bokwa Adonankai Mangatsu o Milutano by Sakamoto Shuji. It is translated into Chinese called "I Can See How Many Times Can I See the Full Moon Rise," and translated by Bai He. The title means "How Many Times Can I Still See the Full Moon Rise?" Sakamoto Shuji was a profound musician. He was diagnosed with cancer in late 2020 and started to write this memoir, recounting his life and the love of music, and talks about the world after he left. He was also called Professor Worldwide because of his achievement. And I know very little about his life. However, I'm sure that we are all blessed with his music at some point in our life. And I heard this book was very personal and very intimate, like a gift that he left us. Number four on this list was a book that I tried to read, but I had. Had to put it down, not because it's a bad book, but because it's just so painful to read. It is Consent by French author Vanessa Springora, and it translated to Chinese as Tong Yi by Li Xiyue. This book is Vanessa's memoir. So 30 years ago, when she was 14, she became a teenager muse and was sexually assaulted by a celebrated French writer. And after all these years, Vanessa, at her age of 40, started and wanted to reclaim. Her story and explores the hypocrisy of the culture that has allowed the sexual abuse of minors to occur. Like I said, I read the beginning of this book, but it's just so painful, and I still want to finish it. It's just like I need to wait to get enough courage and wait for the right moment. Now we are moving on to top three. The book comes at the third place. is a memoir called "100 Years, Many People, Many Things" by Yang Yi with Li Bian. Title translates to "100 Years, Many People, Many Things." Yang Yi. Is a profound translator in China who translated a lot of classic into Chinese, including the well-recognized best version of Wuthrin Heights. In this memoir, she told her story for a hundred years of life, going through the turning point of different eras and centuries, retelling China's modern history from her own perspective. It's moving and also very candid, and provides us a chance to see the life behind historical events. On the second place, we have a book translated from. Korean is called "Ming Liang's Evening" by Chiu Enyang and translated by Ye Lei. Title translates to "The Bright Night." This is a novel exploring women's life in different generations. Protagonist went to a village by the sea after getting a divorce, and she ran into her maternal grandmother, who she hadn't seen for many years. After some awkwardness, they started to get closer and share each other's stories. The setting of the novel reminds me of another very popular book called "Qiu Yuan" in Chinese. This is a book that talks about the hardship in different generations of women. Life stories like these are always very intriguing, but always gonna hit too close to home. And the number one book on the book of the year list is coincidentally another book by a delivery personnel. It is called "I Was in Beijing Sent Food" by Hu Anyan. The title translates to "I Make Deliveries in Beijing." In the first twenty-ish years of working, the author worked at a variety of jobs, including delivery person,、uh, night shift distributor. A convenience store worker and security guard, and so on. Randomly, one day he decided to record his life online and unexpectedly got very good responses. So he kept writing his stories, and it eventually became this book. I found it's very interesting that we have two books from delivery persons on this list, and it really tells you that how important this industry is to our day-to-day -day life in China. And people are curious about and talking about people's life behind all the convenient and modern lifestyle. And that's all about the book of the year. And now let's. Move on the top ten translated fiction into Chinese, including novels and short story collections. And I see some very familiar names that I'm excited to talk about here. Number ten on the list is On Earth Where Briefly Grudges by Ocean Wang. And I noticed that Ocean Wang has a beautiful Chinese name called Wang Ocean. Not sure if he has a Chinese name for some reason or this is his name translated, but it's seriously very beautiful. And the book was translated into 大地上我们转瞬即逝的绚烂 
Lan by Li Pengcheng. This book was written in a letter format from a son to a mother who cannot read, talking about their family history from a 20-something years old perspective, and it's really moving. I have two books by Ocean Wong that I really need to dive in, but this book just made to my TBR as well. I'm so happy that his books are getting translated into the Chinese reading community and are well received. Number 9 is a book translated from Italian and it doesn't have an English translation yet. It's called Ao Su Wei Xin. By Primo Levi. Title roughly translates to Auschwitz, a tranquil city. This is a short story collection, and needless to say, it is very heavy. One of the stories is about Auschwitz, but it also includes short stories from other genres, uh, including science fiction and also two poems. I heard this collection is reflective and powerful, and I'm adding this author to the list of writers that I want to explore as well. Following is Tiempo Sudracios, Harsh Times, by Peruvian writer Mario Vargas. Gastiosa, translated by Hou Jian into Jian Xin Shiko. This is a historical fiction set in 1954 in Guatemala. The military group changed the Guatemala and also the development of Latin America. Mario Vargas Llosa is a writer that grew more and more controversial these days, but this is another of his books that presents the turbulent development of Latin America, and it also looks like it was real received by both communities. On the seventh place, is The Infinite Jest by American writer David Foster Wallace. It's translated into Chinese called Wu Jin de Wan Xiao by Yu Bing Xia. This book has been popular on Booktube for quite some years. The story is set in a Addis halfway house and also a tennis academy, and it also features the most endearingly screw up families in recent fiction. It's a book that talks about pursuing happiness in America, and I think it's a really long book with more than a thousand pages. No no chapters and no table of contents, paragraphs are divided by mystery symbols. I have mixed feelings about if I want to read this book. On one hand, I do like to read some explorational books every now and then, but I'm just not too sure about the length of this book. Also, it was originally published in 1996, so I'm not sure how much of it is still relevant today, consider how fast everything developed. So if you have read this book, please let me know if you recommend me to try it out. On the sixth place is Visitation by German writer Yanni Erpenbeck. And it was translated into Chinese called Ke Xiang by Li Siben. It is said the author is one of the most important German writers today, and this book is set in a house on a forested bank of a lake outside of Berlin. As a place for a visitation, the house witnessed political events and societal changes by housing different guests, and throughout these guest stories, the book related the passion and the face of its inhabitants. This is another book that immediately makes me interested after I read about the blurb, so I imagine I will probably read it soonish. Next, we are moving on to the top 5 of this list. Number 5 is a Korean book. It's called Another Person by Kang Ha Ji. This book is translated into Chinese called Ta Ren by Jian Yuxuan. This book started with a young woman who was forced to quit her job because she spoke up about a workplace sexual harassment. However, instead of getting justice, this event backlashed on her because people kept digging her personal history and accusing her of not being the perfect victim. From here, the book started to explore two other women's stories and ask the question, why do they want to be other person instead of themselves? This book sounds absolutely heartbreaking, and it reminded me of other Korean books on feminism like Vegetarian or Kim Jin Young. Born 1982. Following on the fourth place is a book from one of my favorite authors of all time. It is The Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante. It is translated into Chinese called Bei Yi Qi de Ruzi by Chen Ying. I have a physical copy of this book and I feel like I have to read it now. My TBR just keep growing and growing. So this is a story about a woman's descent into devastating emptiness after being abandoned by her husband with two young children and a dog to care for. It's a book about losing and rebuilding identity as a woman, and because 
Because it's by Anna Fronte, I'm sure the writing is extraordinarily stunning. On the third place, we have The Magician by Kong Tobin. This is translated into Mo Shu Shi by Bo Li. This book is a fictional story about the Nobel Prize winner Thomas Mann's life. So it's like an imaginary biography, starting from when Mann was born into a conservative father and a Brazilian mother. Because of this background, he hid his artistic aspiration from his father and his sexuality from everybody. And we follow Mann's life when he started a family, wrote the profound book called The Magic Mountain, and also following how he battled his desires, families, and the time that he was in. I read very divided reviews from people that I trust and followed on Goodreads, some saying that this is a very powerful book, some saying that this book shouldn't even exist. So I'm indecisive about this book. However, it does make me want to read The Magical Mountains for sure. The top two books on this list are both on the Book of the Year list, with the second one being The Ministry of Pain by Dubla of Ugolashich, and the top one is Bright Night, Mingliang de Yevan, by Korean writer Chiu Enjiang. Both books that I'm interested to read, however, I won't repeat myself here. So the last list I want to talk about today is the top 10 translated nonfiction. However, to be honest, when I was doing research for this particular list, I became more and more unenthusiastic about it. Almost all the books are memoir or memoir-ish, and weirdly, the higher the rank is, the less interested I am about the books. A lot of the books are stories about the life of award-winning people who I guess, if you are a fan of themselves or their work already, you'll be really happy. But for me, I wanted to see more nonfictions about uh, societal issues, history, politics, etc. So, compared to the translated fiction list, this year's nonfiction list, I just cannot be very excited about. However, I think these books are still worth mentioning, so let's go. With that being said, the first three books, which rank from number 10 to number 8, I am actually excited about. On the 10th place, we have Words Are My Matter, writing about life and book, 2000 to 2016, by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a collection of Le Guin's talks, essays, and introductions, and book reviews, and more. And I have decided that if by next time I mention her on my channel, I still haven't finished reading The Left Hand of Darkness. I need to, I don't know, die of shame or at least like run a marathon or some sort. But I blame my slow reading speed for this time. Anyhow, this is a book that I imagine reading after I read some of her novels, which I will start right after this video. In the ninth place, we have the newly translated Crying H Mart by Michelle Zinner. It's translated into Chinese called Mama Zou Ho, means after mom passed away, and it was translated by Cai Wen Ting. This is Michelle Zinner's memoir about the years after her mom passed away. Growing up in a not very diverse community as Korean American, she always felt distant from her Korean side of culture, and this feeling expanded with her mom's illness and past. This book is an emotional inquiry of her roots throughout the memory and the food. I read it when it came out, and I was really moved by it. So I'm really happy to see that this book is on this list. And number eight is The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. This is translated as 生活的代价 by Wang Rufei. This is the second book of Deborah Levy's um, series called Working Autobiography. Here she explores the subtle erasure of women's names, spaces, and the stories in modern everyday. The book critiques the role that society assigned to women and reflects on the politics of breaking the gendered ritual. I didn't remember when, but I marked the first book of this series as my TBR at some point, and now the second book also sounds amazing and was well recognized, so maybe it's time to move it forward priority wise. However, I don't want to add too many books from these videos to my TBR, but feels like I am failing here. Now let's move on to the set of books that I conclude as series that famous people talking about themselves. Like I said, very weird that this year's list is almost all memoir-ish. Even for a memoir lover like me, I still feel like it's less exciting. So number seven is a collection of letters by Herman Hesse, translated by Xie Ying Ying, Wang Binbin, and Gong Jie. I believe this is a selection made by the translators. It talks about the Nobel Prize winner Hesse's life, including personal journeys, changing on ideology, families, and public 
activities. And at number six is another book by another Nobel Prize winner, and it's translated from French. And from my research, it doesn't even have an English translation just yet. It is called 写作是一把刀 and it's written by the 2022 Nobel Prize in Literature winner Annie Ernax. The title of this book translates to "Writing Like a Knife." This is her essay collection talking about her understanding of life and writing. I feel like the community really loves Nobel Prize winners. There are so many of them on this video already, and a lot of the books about their lives and how they worked instead of their work. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very peculiar phenomenon and a choice, in my opinion. And then on number five is *Antes del Fin* by Argentine author Ernesto Sabato. It was translated to *Zhong Liao Zhi Qian* by Hou Jian. Ernesto Sabato started his career as a physicist, but at some point he decided to abandon science and、uh, dedicate himself in arts and literature. And he became one of the most prestigious Latin American writer. This book is his memoir, but at the same time, he talks more about the things in the world. Besides himself, that he cares about. I don't think this book has a decent English translation yet, but I've heard the writing is beautiful and compassionate, and I hope it will be translated someday. Following on number four is *Counterpoint*, a memoir of Bach and mourning by Philip Kennicott. The Chinese translation of this book is called *Fu Diao*. Bach and Life and Death, translated by Wang Zhixia. When Kennicott's mother was dying, he began to listen to the music of Bach obsessively, and it enabled him to both experience death and remove himself from it. This book is his memoir of that period of time and about grief and exploration of music and the meaning behind it. The book on the third place is Who Am I, a autobiography of emotion, mind, and spirit by Duan Yifu. The Chinese version is called I Am. It is translated by Zhi Cheng and Liu Su. Duan Yifu is a Chinese American geographer. He was born in China and moved to the States after college. His work has explored the aesthetic and removal dimensions of human relations with landscapes, natures, and environment. In this book, he combined his personal stories with his ideologies together and explored the meaning of life and also the meaning of living. The second book is called *Dongjing Ba Ping Mi: Eight Square Meters in Tokyo* by Japanese author Yushi Shinobu. This book is very interesting because I believe it was originally written in Chinese, and I don't even see a Japanese version of it. But I guess because the author is Japanese, so it was included in this foreign or like translated literature. List. Yushi lived and worked in China for many years, and this book recorded her first five years of life moving back to Japan after living in China, downsizing to a eight square meters house and living by herself. Because her apartment is so tiny, she needs to seek out communities outside of her house for a lot of activities like laundry, shower, and work. In this process, she met a variety of people and learned some very interesting stories. In the meantime, she reflected on life and what's Necessity. This is actually a rare book that was in the top seven that I'm actually interested in. I guess it's because it's relatable and also sounds fun. And the top book on this list is Consent, which I already talked about in the book of the year list. So again, I won't repeat myself here. And that's all the list I want to cover in today's video. It's a lot more books than last year, so I hope you find this video informative and also entertaining on some level. And please let me know any of your thoughts if you have about these books. And don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. And don't forget to stay tuned for next week's video, which will be about genre fiction and also nonfictions of variety of genres as well. And as usual, please thumbs up to this video if you liked it. And happy reading. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Take care.